Despite being regarded as an inflation hedge, Singapore REITs have been battered by the rising interest rates and even underperformed the STI. With the prices of REITs coming down, how should you decide whether it is time to buy them now? Hi, I'm Hui Shi from the IFAS research team. Today, I'm here to talk about REITs. If you are new to investing in REITs, here are some factors that you should keep in mind. Consider the subsector that the REIT is in, which can provide you with a better understanding of the REIT's outlook and future performance. In Singapore, there are a variety of subsectors including industrial, hospitality, retail, office, data centre and healthcare. REITs report their growing ratio, which cannot exceed the regulatory limit of 50%. A higher gearing ratio represents higher leverage risk. Gearing ratio can also provide a good gauge of a REIT's available debt headroom that can be used to fund acquisitions to generate growth. As REITs sign leases with their tenants, you can also consider the weighted average lease expiry, also known as will. Having a longer will means that a REIT has locked in its income for a longer period of time. This may provide income assurance, especially during an economic downturn. With its income, REITs pay out DPU to investors. DPU, which stands for Distribution Per Unit, can be used to determine how well the REIT is able to deliver sustainable returns for investors. However, do note that a REIT that offers higher distribution yield does not necessarily mean that it is a better investment as it could come with higher risk. And finally, when it comes to valuations, you should know of the price-to-book ratio. If the PB ratio is more than 1, the REIT is trading at a premium to its book value. And if the PB ratio is less than 1, it is trading at a discount. However, during a downturn, PB ratio may not be an accurate valuation metric, as property revaluation losses may not be accounted for in the books yet. While REITs can provide you with a steady stream of income, the risks of investing in them include interest rate risk. Rising interest rates will lead to higher debt servicing costs and lower the income that can be distributed to unit holders. Rising interest rates can certainly also affect real estate value, leading to property revaluation losses. And this may in turn result a drop in the book value and weaken share prices. Furthermore, today's higher interest rates have reduced the appeal of REITs to income-seeking investors. Investors are now compensated with a lower risk premium for holding REITs. Besides that, unit holders can potentially face dilution risk. REITs may need to raise funds in order to perform acquisitions, and unit holders who cannot afford to cough up the cash for their rights entitlement could be diluted and suffer a drop in their DPU. Now, all things considered, should you buy REITs now? In 2023, the impending recession is likely to dampen the near-term outlook of REITs not forgetting that inflation will possibly take much longer than expected to moderate, and consequently, the Fed is unlikely to cut rates even if a recession hits. While rental rates could adjust to inflation over the longer term, REITs are likely to experience a higher cost of debt and suffer a hit to their property valuations. If you think that a 5-6% to yield for REITs is attractive, you might want to think again. Risk-free treasury bills can already offer investors with a 4% yield, while SGD-centric, short-duration investment-grade bonds are currently offering yields of at least 5%. If you are a long-term REIT investor looking to buy REITs, you will be prudent to be selective. Not all REITs are created equal. You may consider large-scale REITs with stronger balance sheets and quality assets, as those may provide them with greater flexibility to adjust towards the fast-changing macroeconomic environment.